Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so example seven here, and we encounter something that we have not encountered in any of the previous examples, which is the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is higher than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. When that's the case, uh, before you do partial fraction decomposition, you have to first do long division. Now, because I have videos dedicated on long division where this is one of the examples, I'm not gonna show you the details. I'm just gonna like, well, if you call this showing you the details, well, then I am going to show you the details. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk you through it, is what I'm trying to say. All right, all right. So, um, the result is stated here, right? When you divide this by this, then you're going to get a quotient of that and a remainder of this. And so, based on that, the way we write our answer, based on seeing the quotient and the remainder, um, as you should know from like my long division or synthetic division videos, is that we're gonna say that this here is equal to, and we have to write it this way, our answer. Um, once we're done with this, we have to write it this way, which is uh, write x minus three, which is the quotient, plus the remainder, which is negative x squared um, plus five uh, x, uh, divided by, we always have to write the remainder divided by the divisor. So the divisor is the thing we divide by, and that's this denominator here, or that guy there. It's the same either way. So that's x cubed minus x squared plus x minus one. Now clearly x cubed uh, minus um, x squared plus x minus one factors as, um, well, how does it factor? Uh, it factors as um, x squared plus one times x minus one, doesn't it? So that's going to be x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1. Yes, it does. So um, we're going to need to know that because the partial fraction decomposition clearly concerns only this part, right? This guy's just going to hang out on the side, right? Okay, cool, cool. So uh, then, because we need the space, uh, perhaps I delete this. Um, yeah, unless you have suggestions. Oh, wait, I can't hear them. <laughs> yes, I've got jokes. Um, okay. Um, all right, all right. Um, so, this here, let's kind of get out of the way. And I can see, so can you, even if it's this small. So I'm being extra playful today. Okay, and we perform the partial fraction decomposition on this part. And so that means that uh, we write that negative x squared plus 5x divided by, let's use a ruler um, so that you don't watch me drawing horizontal lines over and over until I get it right. Um, so this divided by x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1, we're going to say is equal to uh, one of our denominators is going to be um, the linear factor uh, and then the other is going to be the quadratic factor. So um, we're going to write, I guess, let's write the linear factor first. So x minus 1 and then x squared um, plus 1 right here. Yeah. Now the linear uh, factor, this denominator, will have to have a numerator that's constant, whereas the quadratic will have to have a numerator that is linear. So the x plus c, and let's put a plus sign right here. Well, let's make it more central. And now clearly um, you're used to the process. What we have to do is multiply here by x squared plus one top and bottom, um, right? And then multiply over here by um, x minus one top and bottom. And so we do that. And then um, you move forward from here. Do I really have to finish it? Um, no. Um, I um, want to, um, but, um, well, yeah, I will, fine. Um, I see some of you saying, like, yes, you should. Um, so we have a times x squared plus 1, and then plus, I'm just, like, fatigued, because I've been making, like, these examples back to back, and, like, it's pretty tedious, because I know how to do this, like, Clearly, um, so no, sorry guys, sorry if that sounded cocky. I didn't mean to um, make it that way. I'm just saying it's exhausting. Um, I'm just talking to myself at this point. Uh, minus x squared plus x minus one. 
maybe I'm trying to be relatable. I don't know. Um, okay, so this here equals this here, which in turn equals that there. So this here has to equal this here. Um, and you've seen this over and over in all the previous examples, if you have watched the previous examples. So we can get rid of this like middleman, right? And oh no, I don't want to get rid of that middleman because it's our reminder of how we should write our final answer. But anyway, from uh, wanting this to equal this here, uh, we see that uh, what we need is for uh, negative x squared plus 5x, we need it to equal. Since this here and this here already have the same denominators, we only need the numerators to equal, so we need this to equal this here. And that there, if I distribute the a, is going to be ax squared uh, plus a. And then if I uh, FOIL there, I'm going to have plus uh, bx squared uh, minus uh, bx and then uh, plus cx and then minus c. And if we group like terms, we could write that we have a plus b uh, times x squared and then um, we have uh, plus uh, c minus bx and then we have um, plus a minus c yeah okay cool so we go uh, now we don't need this guy anymore right and we could scoot this closer and show um, it's one missing term which is the constant term and we go plus zero here and this makes for easy comparison clearly negative one here has to equal a plus b so we write that so negative one has to equal a plus b right and then uh, we see that five has to equal c minus b so five has to equal um, c minus b and then uh, 0 has to equal a minus c and that's a 5 guys sorry uh, 0 has to equal um, a minus c right a minus c okay cool so from the last equation we see that a has to equal c and from knowing that we see that um, we see that the first equation can be turned into um, negative 1 is equal to uh, since a is equal to c, we can write c plus b. And then if we stack this version of this first equation where we replace the a with c since they are equal based on the third equation, if we take um, this and then stack um, the second equation and this version of the first equation together and uh, then um, add them down, we get something nice which is when we add them down we get that um, we get that four um, y'all okay sorry it's getting crowded uh, but yeah so it's gonna be like four is equal to 2c from which we gather that c is equal to uh, 2 but if c is equal to 2 since a is equal to c that means that 2 is also equal to a got it and then um, we need to solve for, we have A and C, we need to solve for B. We know that negative one is equal to A plus B. So that means negative one is equal to A is two. So two plus B, meaning that B has to equal negative three. Okay, whew. After all this, we're done because we know that this is supposed to equal this plus that. Um, and so then we know how to write this as like these two fractions and so our final answer is going to say this um, which is that uh, the original fraction we started off with this guy that giant guy is equal to it's equal to uh, the quotient guy which we had to leave alone so that's x minus 3 and then the part that we did partial fraction decomposition on this guy turned into a over x minus 1 where a is 2 so plus 2 over um, x minus 1 and then plus uh, bx plus c and b is uh, negative 3 and c is 2 so plus negative 3x um, plus 2 divided by um, x squared 
plus 1. And that completes the work. This here is equal to those three guys added together. Yeah? Okay, cool. That's it for example 7. I hope you enjoyed this video series. And I have, as I promised at the start, I have covered all your bases. And the only thing that you might have is maybe like a combination of uh, the types of problems that I've exposed you to in the seven examples, one through seven. So you should know how to deal with it. I've basically exposed you to all the possible nuances and all the variety that you need. And so, yeah, hopefully you got a lot out of that. All right, keep watching. Take care.